Today is the day. Hello, it is Neighbours Day. I'm going to Erinsborough today. Um, and it's going to be a wonderful day, I hope. Uh, there should be lots of opportunity for me to film, take lots of great pictures. So I'm hoping this is a good one. This is one of the main reasons I came to Australia. Um, be waiting many years for this, so hopefully it's going to be everything I want and more. I just want to quickly show you this. This is some of what has happened to me after clearly sharing my bed with some sort of savage beast. I mean, like that, all down both arms, down both legs, even on my torso, on my back. What is going on? What is in that bed? Right, well, we have found where we need to get our bus, but we're super early, so I'm just gonna go for a little walk in the daylight and see what Flinders Street is like here in Melbourne. And then it's off to Erinsborough. Good times. One thing that's really stood out around Melbourne and around Sydney uh, is it's just so much work going on, so much construction. So they say they're up and coming cities and they're ever expanding, but that's all well and good, but it's in a constant state of disruption. Um, there's roads closed off all over the place, scaffolding all over the place, workmen all over the place, but that's the nature of an expanding city, I guess. Look what I found. Found me some donuts. This is exciting indeed. I think I might try one of these. Sour cherry. I went for it. I went for the sour cherry donut. Looks delicious. And I am about to tuck into this bad boy. Hopefully it's going to be a taste sensation. Uh, for reference, that place was called Walker's Donuts. Uh, and it's just on one of the street corners of Belinda Street. And uh, that was delicious. Uh, I'm glad that I went for a little walk. Yeah, that is slightly out of date cast members. <laughs> but the bus is here. Fremantle Studios in Nutterwadding, so it's about a half hour drive. We're gonna check out some sets. We don't know until we get there what sets we're allowed to look at. I know they've been on a production break over Easter, so it just depends. We definitely get to see uh, Grease Monkeys and a few of the other Handy Woman and Fitzgerald Motors and that sort of thing, but we will find out when we roll in as to exactly what sets and where we can go today. And if we're gonna have a meeting, a real meet and greet, not a suspicious bomber. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, who has been... To say the swear word today, you'll be walking home. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, many ways is the swear word, by the way? Maybe it's just better than the swear word. Then the, yes, thank you. <laughs> That's the old one, this is the new one. today yes. which is very 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 rare for a midweek to or a weekday to us so car parked empty so you know there's no one here <laughs> alrighty hey guys so as I said they use every single inch of this joint so this bush on the right hand side here that's 
when, remember when Toadie got lost in the bush? So in this big red brick building here, this is where they have some sets and the green room, so millions of dollars of cameras and whatnot in there, which we aren't allowed to have access into. Um, but I will be able to spin you around to a number of the sets today. Uh, looking out the window here on the right hand side, we do have. Anybody got a tell me? You can picture all the kids walking in and out of the schoolyard there, from the school dog. And we could even reenact some scenes today. <laughs> I do have a, a clapperboard as well. So we can do some reenact some scenes. Yeah, yeah that's the school. Okay. But they got approached by a developer that said they wanted to buy the land off them. So they made a deal. They cut a deal with the developer that yes you can buy the land only if we can use the property that you're building in one of our scripts. So they made an agreement, yep, yeah, all good. So then, they're real townhouses with real residents living in them now, <laughs> but that's what they wrote into the script as Robinson Heights. So, wow. that is Robinson Heights, and yeah, that used to be neighbors, neighbors' land, but yeah, and they, 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 it's pretty, pretty good score. Like, they're actual real townhouses as well, not just sets, so. Mm. So on the left-hand side here, just beyond this little light post and camera in this corner here where this grass is, so they, there's a scene where there was a tornado. So what they did is they brought all these hoses and fans and whatnot and, and set it all up here. And no word of a lie, it was like five days later or something, a real mini tornado ripped through this exact same area. <laughs> yeah, the, the guide on the weekend, we have a security guard that uh, comes with us on the weekends and he was here when it happened so he said no joke a real tornado ripped through a little less than a week later so the tram you see ahead of us uh is yet to be on the show i believe it's already been written into a script so you will you've seen that before it's even been on the show so that's coming out on the show uh well, within the next months you'll be able to see that uh, on the right hand side is fitzgerald motors and then behind the gate over there, that's the handy woman. So we're gonna to stick just to this area now. So we are set notable. Well, there's our first stop off on the tour. It's Fitzgerald Motors. And over here, it's Grease Monkeys and the Barrel Barrel Shop. There's a new bit of set over there, as you've just seen. Have you not seen that on TV yet? Here is formerly Diana Kyle, currently the handy woman. access to basically everywhere today we've been told but that's because there is a production break so that's a downside there's no one working here so no chance of a cast meet and greet because it's their Easter holiday break but at least on the plus side we get to see everything because quite often if they're filming you just can't go to major sections uh, so we'll see what else the tour has to offer so this is new um, I'm looking at it and I was thinking, I don't recognize it. It was the bric a brac shop, but it's, it was only built six weeks ago. So that will surely be coming into play on telly soon as well. Right, onwards we go. <laughs> uh, that red car underneath the where that jacket's sitting on top. Now, is it Danny and his girlfriend? 
that lived in the back of a, the red station oh, wagon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, was it yeah, it was Danny, yeah. yeah. So that's the vehicle that they first, when they first moved to Melbourne, that they lived in. So uh, on the left, in that corner, down on the left down there, you've got the men's, uh, sorry, what's it called, the power? Oh yeah, men's shed. The men's shed. Yeah, yeah, so the men's shed. So the power hour the, shed. The gym. Yeah, that's where the gym is. They just put a few benches there and off oh, they go. Like a little ghetto gym. <laughs> yeah. On the right hand side in these sheds, there are some sets. So there's a bedroom set in there. And then also in this red building, basically there's... Just a sec guys. The lounge room or bedroom or whatever. And they have the four sets and they just have the camera up in the middle of the four like the corner of the four and then they can just spin the camera around to whatever set that they're filming uh -huh. on so yes i've gained exclusive access in here before so. <laughs> <laughs> me and my mate dr carl <laughs> uh, so you guys there's a little mini museum in here that has only been running for a couple of weeks so it's literally brand new so we're going to go in this is a toilet break as well Ooh, this is the newly constructed little museum. <laughs> like this, have that CD. <laughs> Full salute tea. Great. <laughs> So those chairs are for you guys to sit on. Oops. room there uh, seeing lots of things they recognized from various points in neighbors history seen a little game that I've played and a CD that I own in the museum as well uh, so that was fun good fun let's see what's next on tour it's that we can go into this area on a midweek tour on a weekday tour so Ooh. in there that's Sonia's well, was Sonia's nursery in there just on the right hand side okay so that was Sonia's nursery and this is the point of no return. <laughs> so yeah, we're never allowed in here. So this, you guys have got a mega bonus today. So there's no star meet and greet, which isn't really promised anyway, but this is what we're going past now is a community center. So on the left hand side, community center, it's an actual set on the right hand side. That's the charity being that. Um, who got stuck in there, Ellie? So yeah. she was in there looking for a stolen bracelet. <laughs> and so all the cast and crew actually kept dumping stuff in there. So they put a sign up there saying it's a prop. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> the community wall here on the right. By Ramsey Rachel. Was it Rachel Ramsey? Someone, one of the Ramseys? Yes. The history wall, sorry. Uh, on the right hand side in there we will go to after. So in there is, that's actually my mate, Dr. Carl's uh, garden. Uh, and that is, yeah, a little greenhouse. Oops. Through there are the sets of the backyards, which we have complete access to today as well. So we're gonna get into the Willis and Tanaka, so the Rebecca's old joint, and we'll go into Teresa's place. And we can just pop our heads into the canning because we can't go in there, but I'll open it up for you anyway. Uh, on the right hand side there is the backpackers. 
the rest of the backpackers, free breakfast, free Wi Fi. <laughs> Before you ask. And then on the left is the last of this complex. So, yes. guys, there's just a couple of, couple of little ground rules here, okay? So, we're allowed full access to everything here except see the barbecue hut where Kate died down the back there, straight out the front window. We're not allowed down there because we're not allowed to go on the grass, okay? So we're not allowed to step foot on the grass. Now the bridge, we're not allowed on the bridge either. So, but that lake there, that is the, the lake. Now it is only like shin deep or knee deep. So when there's, and who was it Tony saved a baby in there? Harold was looking for Madge's ring. He was just on his knees. So, yeah. Well, here we are. Here's Lassiter's actually walking up to the hotel. Again, everything just seems a lot smaller. But this is it, it's how it's, it's how it's laid out. <laughs> it looks way bigger on telly. Right. So there's Rebecca Law, there's the police station, there's the water hall. It's really close together. It looks very different on telly. And we're not allowed in that section there. Have to stay on this path. But um Yeah, pretty awesome. Soak it up, neighbours fans. Let's see what we can see inside. Inside Lassiter's. Let's have a look. Ah, there's a desk. It's hard to see through the window, but you get the idea. Ah, see these wheeled around a lot. These days I often see Ned with one of those. The infamous lift. Head up to the penthouse. And then... Ah, it's the main desk. The front desk. Yeah, we get a lot of scenes in here these days. That's great. Not allowed over here. But, let's see if we can have a look. That's the bridge. A lot of famous scenes filmed out here. The lake. What I thought was a bandstand, but it's a barbecue hut apparently. Again, it just looks really small in real life. I guess everything looks bigger on camera. Ah, they're from a fairly recent uh, episode. I've come a little closer to this tree. Um, barbecue pit there. This is the back entrance. There's, this is around the side of Harold's. There we go. The actual Lassiter's complex in all of its glory. Pretty cool to be here. Um, watch this show basically all my life. Um, so to just be stood here right now, you know, where all of the, the characters have walked over all of these years, it's a pretty cool experience, not gonna lie. Uh, Again, I've said this a few times, it's just crazy how small everything seems. It all looks bigger on telly. Uh, I guess it's just really well shot. So it's all look, it all looks spaced out on, on the actual show. But just to think that this is, they've just built this and it's a set and it's just here permanently. Uh, and that's pretty cool. Um, there was information said on the bus before, which I'm sure will have made it into the final edit of this, where we saw uh, Robinson Heights, the new um, housing estate that's been built, and that they're real houses, um, but the compromise is that they're allowed to be used in the show. So, it's, you know, it's always changing, always expanding, but this is my chance to be here and soak it all in, so. It's just great to be here. I'm very happy right now. I've seen 
I've seen the two things I wanted to see. Came here, wanted to see. Home and away, wanted to see neighbours. And uh, living the dream right now. It's great to see this um, up close and personal. This has been in there for quite a few years now. The history wall. It's pretty awesome. They clearly put a lot of effort into it. Kind of take it for granted on the show these days. But yeah, it's pretty cool. now as I'm walking into Carl and Susan's garden. This is their garden. I was watching an episode just this morning that took place here in this very greenhouse. And here it is, it's a fully working greenhouse as well. I'm not allowed in there. Here we are, the backpackers. So it seems they got you some exclusive footage there. Uh, I wasn't allowed to properly go in and look inside the greenhouse. Don't know why. Um, but then, I, as soon as I was told, I came away. But I've seen inside the greenhouse. It's a fully working greenhouse. Didn't see any apricots though. And maybe that's because they've just all been handed out to the neighbours. Green room street. That area, and then also School in the entry. street brick building here is where they do the majority of the filming. So on Ramsey Street, on Ramsey Street, they only film the outside of the houses. They don't actually go inside any of the properties there. So where we're going now, where we'll be able to actually go into the backyard of Teresa's place and the Rebecca's old place, then. The rest of it, everything that's filmed inside, because you'll see people walking in and out of those backyard, in and out of those doors. But once they're in, inside, that's where they shoot. All the stuff is inside. So there are physical sets, and there's also green rooms. So there's also um, just like a green screen, you know, where there's uh, where, where there's some production done. So. All right, we'll go up into Teresa's joint and we'll have a look at the Rebecca's and just pop our head into the Kangs. And then after this, we'll head towards Ramsey Street. So we've got to be over there by sort of like one-ish. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, you can go well, in. to walk in. You're allowed to walk in, it's fine, yeah. Great. <laughs> It's a lovely garden, even though it's a fake one. It's Teresa's house. Ah, oh, the punching bag. 
Ned was punching on that bag just <laughs> just yesterday. <laughs> Look in there. That is non-alcoholic beer due to the fact that Therese is a recovering alcoholic. Here we are, side entrance to Therese's house. It is locked however, which is funny because in the show no one ever seems to lock their doors. I've seen many a scene coming round this corner. Yeah, pretty awesome. So that's the, the real road just behind me over there. Look that way. That was where we were just a second ago. We're not allowed to walk through these trees. Uh, but that is where the backpackers and the other stuff was. But we had to drive around uh, for health and safety reasons. Right now we're moving on to uh, another house. I can't remember which house he said. Willis Tanaka house. This is a bit more traditional so there's no looking back Ah, the pool cover's on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, like, it's just like a fisheye lens to make it mystical. Yeah, yeah. How deep is it? Like, I think it's actually... Yeah, and once you rip that off... Oh, yeah, it's actually a limit, Yeah. And it's just filmed with a, a fish eye, yeah, which yeah, then yeah. makes it look like a whole lot bigger. Yeah. Clever. So this is around the side to the Tanaka Willis house. We've got all these berries on the floor. We've got a real lawnmower here. Uh, a side gate. Again, we see many a scene. People come around the side. Don't often get to see the gate, but occasionally you do see the gate. Uh, again, it all looks a lot smaller in real life, but uh, it's just cool to be here, to know that this is where they film. I've seen so many scenes filmed here over the years. Let's see if we can get a shot inside. Get a better one round here. <laughs> Look at that, even that, just the, the noodles on the side there. Trivial pursuit in the corner. A lot of attention to detail. I'm going to be looking out for these on the actual uh, show now. Game under there. What is that game? I can't quite see. Hungry Hippos. That's a classic. We often see these on camera, wonder about them. Big water butts, I think. This is there. This gate needs a bit of, a bit of TLC. So there we go, the Willis Tanaka home. Another great place to come and visit and just sort of walk around. And uh, I learned that it's all often shot through a fisheye lens to give it the feeling of being bigger than it actually is which is which is good inside knowledge to have uh, i'm not sure what's next i think we'll go into the street soon which is good because i didn't think we were actually going to the street uh, but it turns out we are going to the street so let, let it all continue it's going it's going well i'm enjoying seeing these things it just feels kind of surreal to be here a bit like when i was doing the home and away tour you're sort of walking in the areas that you've seen on telly for all of these years. Um, so to actually just walk this floor, be a part of this, you know, it's pretty special. If you're a fan, if you're not a fan, then you don't care. But if you are a fan and you're watching this, then uh, I hope you're enjoying just seeing all of this the same way I am. <laughs> shed where Paige got a little naughty and then uh, gave birth also to her child 
but it's literally just out the back of the houses not actually out in the bush as we were led to believe so they really use every inch of this as much as they can and uh, do a very convincing job of transporting us uh, way beyond where this actually is so well done neighbours team the cannings oh, we're not allowed in and some more over on the there's the hot tub the next episode. gnomes. <laughs> All the Sheila's gnomes. Good stuff. So that's the tour of the, the backyards done. We weren't allowed to actually step into the canning backyard. I'm not really sure why, uh, but we got to see it anyway. Again, looks a lot smaller in real life, but it's good to know that other than the fake grass, all the plants and everything else uh, are 100% real. Uh, so we're going to move on now. We're about to get on the bus. Uh, but there we go. So we've seen Lassiter's, now we've seen the backyards, and I think we're moving on to the actual street now. Uh, but this is great. So if you're a fan, you need to start saving if you've not been out and done this tour. You might even get lucky, you might come on a production day. Although on a production day, you're not guaranteed to meet people and there's lots of things that get sectioned off. So it's kind of swings and roundabouts really. But um, I'm sure there's lots of you that will have done this tour and you will have had a similar experience or maybe you got to meet some people, uh, share in the comments section, you know, share your experiences. And uh, I'd love to see some of your videos of you doing the tour as well. Oh, that ambulance that you saw uh, earlier, yeah. that would be parked just up ahead on the right hand side and then they've got an emergency sign. So this, yeah, and you can picture Dr. Carl, my mate Dr. Carl walking <laughs> along, the, <laughs> along the windows. And there's also the aquatic centre. And they've also will throw a departure slash arrival sign up. <laughs> airport, yeah, so. Multi-purpose. It's hospital, aquatic centre, slash airport. Yeah. And then, yeah, these are the footy posts here on the left. So if they were playing footy, you can see it now. Reg Grundy. The old owner, that was his heli helipad. Oh, yeah. So he used to fly in by chopper. Yeah. <laughs> this bush just here on the right. Was it? Who fell in the bush just the other day? A few weeks ago? <laughs> Is it Finn or, or, or Leo? Who, who? Oh, Finn. Finn. Yeah. It was Finn, wasn't it? That's the bush he fell in there. <laughs> he, um, he's one of the, the characters who... He doesn't usually stop and wave and that sort of thing, so, yeah. I've only, we've only ever seen him a couple of times, but, yeah, anyway. Okay, cool. What we'll do is, we, as I said, we'll head off to Ramsey Street and give old baby his keys back. <laughs> Make sure we do it. So, yeah, so they said, yeah, yeah, just go for it. Go ahead and film, okay? So then it wasn't until uh, Neighbours first took off that Channel 10 actually made a contract with the residents of this street to be able to be able to film so they film twice a week about six to eight hours a day they film only the outside of the houses okay so they only film the outside all the sets as I said are back here and back in the in the studios um, but they're actually paid obviously they paid a nice little sum of money for Fremantle Studios to be able to come and film on their street every day or every day, twice a week. So they they have to, you know. Obviously, part of the contract is keep the garden clean, keep the lawns mowed. You know, when they're filming on those days, they have to pull their blinds down. They're not allowed to come and go from their houses. So yeah, and they have to take all their cars. There's one property that has a camper van parked there, and he has to take his camper van twice a week and park it around the corner. Um, but yeah, the number that I've been given was 28,000. I'm not sure if this is true or false, but 
the number I've been given is 28,000 Australian dollars per year for neighbours to be able to film it on their street. Yeah, which is... Yeah. yeah, you could. You could just, you could just live with... Yeah, you could live in Bali. <laughs> yeah, come home. Yeah, exactly. Live in Thailand. That's your 30 grand. That'll last you a year in, in Bali. Well, there we go, people. This is... Ramsey Street, well, it's Pinnock Street at the moment because we haven't got the sign up yet. But this is a a real a real uh, cul-de-sac. The people that live here get about 28 grand, as you just heard on the bus. To get 20, about 28 grand a year just to let neighbours come in here for the two days a week that they do. But there's very strict instructions they have to follow. Uh, the average wage for someone, the average working wage in Australia is 33,000, so you're only five grand short of a full-time wage just to let neighbors come here twice a week. So they film here twice a week, for six to eight hours at a time. Oh, I'm quite glad that he's moving his van because it means we can get a good shot of uh, the Brennan's residence. Oh, it's all of a sudden, it's all just turned to craziness. It started to absolutely chuck it down. <laughs> uh, and the wind's really picked up. So I've got to be careful when I turn the camera around because I'm not allowed to film any of the residents and there are some of the residents just walking around. Uh, these aren't residents, however, these are just fellow neighbours fans or all the people that have been dragged along by fellow neighbours fans. Yeah. A passing shower. Uh, you can see the Ramsey Street sign is now in action. I'm going to try and get my picture taken with that. shower the last one didn't last very long so hopefully this one will just pass over get a bit of cover but we're pretty much done anyway we've seen everything we need to see we've taken a lot of pictures so there we go Ramsey Street bucket list tick um, I hope you've enjoyed coming on this tour with me and maybe it's inspired you to come yourself or to share some of your experiences if you've been before uh, tell me about it. Uh, Pinnock Street. If you just happen to be in the area, look for Pinnock Street. And there's a security guard on guard. Can you see him up in the back? I don't know. He's on guard 20 hours a day. So he just literally just walks around the street, make sure people abide by the rules. Not going on the property, not filming the, the actual residence. So there we go. Neighbours tour done and dusted. And what a tour it's been. It's been really good. I hope you've enjoyed this little insight I've given you. So thanks for watching if you have indeed watched. Well, after this morning's donut, I've decided to go in once more. But this time, I got a vanilla cream and I nail it to my wrap there. Thank you very much. There we go. If you happen to be in Melbourne anytime soon, I can definitely recommend the Walker's Donuts. Absolutely delicious. Just had another one different flavour but same good quality so I'm going to look up one of the uh, funky streets that Melbourne has to offer looking for somewhere to eat I've just had a little donut just to take off the, the hunger but we do need to eat something a bit more substantial this guy just 
totally just walked into me there. It's okay then. I'll survive. Oh, we just had to find a toilet. Finally found one in the station and now need some actual substance. Didn't find anything in uh, the street before. It's gonna get something uh, from here. Lord of the Fries. Ooh, yeah, going for Lord of the Fries. Sweet potato fries and a burger coming up. Hopefully it's gonna be a taste sensation. So I have my food. I'm not yet able to eat it because a bit of a uh, confusion over a bus we're about to get on. We're getting on the hop on hop off tour bus to finish our time in Melbourne. But uh, we don't know where the bus gets yet, but except mum seems to have figured it out. So Annika Reistow were rushing towards the bus, so I can't enjoy this food yet until we get settled on the bus. And I probably I'll sit down and they'll say, oh, no eating on the bus, and I'll be like, oh. Um, it stinks right here because there's like horse-drawn carriages and they're just pooing all over the place, so smell of vision would not be a good idea right now. Anyway, let's hope we can get on the bus and all will be right with the world. To what Melbourne has to offer. Which is weird, we're leaving later. Well, I just uh, had to eat the burger whilst we were running, but it turns out now we've got like a half an hour wait, so I can actually show you the fries before I devour them. Sweet potato fries, American barbecue sauce, uh, much in with the theme of the day, living the dream. Quick review of my Lord of the Fries sweet potato fries would be, maybe not Lord of the Fries. Yeah, they were reasonable fries, but I've had better. The burger was pretty good, but unfortunately I had to wolf that down because we were running to the bus. So this is the hop on hop off bus. I'm about to hop on. Uh, I probably won't film on the bus. I'll just sit down, put the ear pieces in and hear what Melbourne has to offer. We're going on the history based one, so um, I'll come away with a good understanding of what makes Melbourne, Melbourne. Oh, well, we have just finished our hop on hop off tour. We basically just got on and did the whole tour. We did hop off anywhere um, because we just wanted to see what Melbourne had to offer. Uh, but it was just so cold. We sat upstairs and by the last few stops, I did come down. Uh, but it's really cold today. I mean, it was all right before, but as the day's gone on, it's just got colder and colder. It's raining again now. It rained a few times on the bus. And so we just got very cold. So I was only half paying attention to things because I was mostly just trying to get warm. Uh, we've seen a lot um, on the tour, to be fair. There is a lot to see. And there's a lot of information to take in. Some of it I'd already seen on all the bits of tours that we've done. Uh, but that was kind of our last official uh, holidaying activity and then we'll be packing later and getting ready to go home uh, but today was really just about neighbours for me and it totally lived up to all expectations it was awesome so I can put up with a bit of coldness and a bit of bad weather just because the morning and the early afternoon on the neighbours tour was so good well, this is our final walk back to our apartment. And Melbourne, the more I've been here, the more I'm realizing that there's so much more to it. There's so much I haven't seen. I haven't been to St Kilda, I haven't really been to see um, the things like the Chinatown, the graffiti. I've seen little glimpses as I've walked past, not things that I've been able to sort of film. Uh, so, uh, if you are thinking of coming to Melbourne, there's a lot more to see than just what I've shown. But what I've shown has been great. The tours that we've done have been fantastic. Really long days, but they've taken us out of Melbourne, which means I've not had the opportunity to really see what Melbourne has to offer. Today, I can tell you, it, it offers cold weather. I was actually shivering a little bit before when we did the bus tour. I've not been able to warm up since the bus tour. But it's not always like this. It's very close to the Antarctic, so there's a cool, wind blowing in um, but yeah Melbourne has been good definitely do the neighbours tour if you are a fan of neighbours or have ever been a fan of neighbours um, so I went with Maria my godmother and she used to watch it years ago but she really enjoyed the tour so even, even if you've only just had a glimpse of neighbours it's definitely worth it because it's something cool and it's a good tour 
so that's probably going to conclude today's uh, vlogging I hope you enjoyed the neighbors experience as much as I did even though you weren't there some of you uh, will have been there or will go there in the future It's been good, and maybe one day I'll see some more of you, and if not, then thank you for the good times that I've had in the short time that I've been here. And now it's time to go home, uh, back to Oblighty and back to work. Oh, there's a bit of music playing there. It's playing me out. Farewell, Melbourne.